We are back on the road to City Hall, and right at New York City's border with Long Island sits District 23. It includes the neighborhoods of Queens Village, Oakland Gardens, and Glen Oaks. The district is represented by Mark Weprin, whose family has long served this area of the borough. The district has a growing immigrant population, the city's largest tract of undisturbed farmland, and a bumper crop of high-performing public schools. If Councilman Weprin wins re-election this November, he hopes his colleagues will choose him to be the next city council speaker. We took a tour of his district, and here is what we saw. Councilman, good to hey. see you. Hey, Errol. Welcome. Thank you. Here nice we are in um, Bayside, or I guess Oakland Gardens is the sub-neighborhood. That's absolutely right. And yeah. you wanted to start at this school, why? Uh, this is a great school, PS203. Coincidentally, for, for the entire time I've been an elected official, which unfortunately will be 20 years in the spring, I've been coming to this school, uh, and they've encouraged me to come and speak to the students, and it's a very special place. And it actually got a blue ribbon school, a national blue ribbon school last year, uh, one of only a handful of schools nationally. And they have an amazing arts program. And these are K through five students, little kids who put on great performances. And I think they're gonna do one for us today. Oh, let's have a look. Terrific, thanks. On the campus of Queensboro Community College, and this place is the Holocaust Resource Center, which began, I understand it, as part of the college and has now sort of become something separate. Yeah, this was actually an archive in the basement of a library, a Holocaust documents, uh, which years ago we helped get funding from the state as well as from the city in order to build this building. It's required in the curriculum of New York City. Uh, Bill, actually, I was a co-sponsor of that. You have to teach about the Holocaust and slavery in city schools. And this was a great vehicle for students to learn about the Holocaust. One of the most powerful instruments we have for teaching is our Holocaust survivors. These are people in their 80s and 90s who have never been trained to be teachers, but they are eloquent when they get up and they develop a relationship that changes our students from students to insurance policies. Our insurance policies are students who guarantee those stories will not be forgotten. We're here in Queens Village at a, a lovely Buddhist temple and uh, it's connected with India Home. Tell me about that program. Well, Dr. Kala Sapura, um, who is Dr. K to us, uh, set up a program called India Home for Seniors, for the, in particular the South Asian community. It was an underserved uh, community in our neighborhood, and we reached out to her about how to fund this program. Uh, the Buddhist temple here was nice enough to help house them one of the days of the week. And Dr. K does a great job of uh, providing services uh, and also social and recreational services uh, for these seniors. So much of funding was cut down for the Department of Aging and uh, many other departments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is one way of creating an innovative center where we are using the existing facilities. So this is part of your answer to um, the annual attempt to close a lot of CD centers. We've been trying to support the programs through our discretionary funding as much as possible. How long have you been coming to I'm India I'm here Home? since 2008. Okay. It's like oh, five years now. Okay, and what's your favorite part of uh, participating? We enjoyed the yoga. <laughs> That's good, you know, for uh, like senior, even mm -hmm. for the young people also. Mm -hmm. Good for health. And we come here instead of spending time at home just watching TV and this. We're here at the uh, Glen Oaks Community Library, brand new place. Beautiful. Hugely expensive, I must say, $17 million. I can see where it all went. It looks like top-notch materials, computers everywhere I'm looking. I have to give credit to my predecessor for most of the lion's share of that money, along with Mayor Bloomberg. Uh, over the years, we uh, came in late to this process, but we were thrilled to be here as, as we opened this year. Your predecessor. My predecessor. Councilman Weprin. Right, who I occasionally have Thanksgiving with. What gets the most use here? I've noticed that a lot of the libraries have sort of a theme or a, a sort of a populace that they're really sure. aiming at. This is a busy library. It's twice as big as the old library, and it's currently circling like crazy, as we say. So it's circling at uh, the sixth busiest uh, in the system right now, which is quite a quite a leap from where it was. So people are circling, really meaning it. circulation, circulating uh, books. Yes, yes okay. so that's sort of library lingo. So the skylight here is what? 
It's one of the great features of this building. Oh, we're underground. So flooded so with light. Yeah. You, yeah. We're underground here, but this uh, is a skylight that goes up to the, the outside reading lounge that's outside the garden, which is a great feature, and it just brings that natural light down here to the lower level. This area, I think of this area, Douglaston and Bellrose and so forth, as kind of ethnically homogenous, but that's not really the case anymore oh, at all, is it? As far from that as you could possibly imagine, Errol. I, I have what I think is maybe the most diverse district in e the entire city. Everybody, everybody says that, you know. People say that. I want to, I want to, you know, look at the numbers. There are lots of places in New York where you say, hey, am I really in the city? This place kind of tops a lot of the rest. We're in Glen Oaks, but we're on a farm. Correct. <laughs> Pretty amazing. And, and it's been here for how long? It's been here since 1697. Okay. It's been a museum since 1975. So it's been here for over 300 years. You're and good. it's been a farm uh, all that time. It has. It's the longest continuously farmed vegetable farm in New York State. I used to tell that to my colleagues in Albany who are from Madison County and, and Oswego County upstate. They didn't believe me that I had the those, longest. Those newcomers upstate That's who just it. got into the said, farming business? Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I got the oldest farm in the state, so don't tell me about farming. <laughs> okay, well, I see a lot of animals. I see some uh, alpaca creatures and some. Uh, we saw some pigs and goats and other stuff going on here. Right, we have alpaca, we have uh, sheep. There's Sean, we have fabulous wool that we sell, and we have hens and goats and pigs and all the different farms. So it's a, it's, a, it's a working farm? It's a working farm. And we have over 200,000 visitors, school kids here every year uh, from all over the New York City area and Long Island area uh, who learn about the history of our country, who learn about farming, who learn about animals, and get to see land that they don't always get to see at their schools or in their neighborhoods. Okay, in fact, there's a bunch of kids right here That's from uh, PS 186. How do you guys like the farm? Okay. <laughs> they also grow their own grapes here for wine, and they bottle it out in Mattituck. Absolutely. And so there's Queen's wine coming out of your, you've got a vineyard in your district. The only wine sold in New York City where the grapes are grown in Queens. Okay, very good. And um, and it's not bad, I have to say. It is quite um, good. You, you had no primary, so um, you will have a, a general election. That's why I'm drinking wine. <laughs> <laughs> you have a general election third party candidate, but assuming you're reelected, you actually have two more terms because you're grandfathered in under the old rules. What are the priorities for the district going forward? Obviously, one of the things we have are great local public schools, uh, which in my opinion have suffered under the Bloomberg administration because they put a cap on learning and an obsession about standardized tests. Big priority is public transportation, to, to improve our public transportation options. It's very hard to get here. We don't have a subway. We don't have the Long Island Railroad in my district. People have to take buses, and they're not clean lines. They're not clean, straight lines. Uh, we want to make sure we increase those transit options for our commuters here in uh, Queens. We want to... Uh, continue to make sure that co-op and condo owners, because we have so many of them, are treated fairly uh, as compared to other homeowners and uh, businesses, that they're taxed at a proper rate. And uh, to continue to keep the streets safe, to uh, continue to make this a great neighborhood, to live, work, raise a family, uh, which I've done, which I was raised here, and I'm raising my family here. It's a beautiful place, not all as beautiful as this one spot. <laughs> but uh, it is a great neighborhood. Okay, thank you for uh, showing us around. I will drink to that. Cheers. Okay, good. Welcome to Queens. I'd like to thank Councilman Weprin and his staff for arranging this week's tour. We're gonna take a short break now, and when we come back, the four members of our Reporters Roundtable will help us wrap up the first week in the general election campaign in the race for mayor. Stay with us.